What is going on guys? Grave here today as I talk about the best settings for the Elder Scrolls Online for console. I update this video every year. I try to put one of these out every year because I know there's a lot of console players that play the game. Now keep in mind, depending on if you play on a new gen console or an old gen console, you may not see some of these settings on the old gen console. So just keep in mind if you don't see some of these in your setting options, that is why. So first of all, let's look at the video settings. I play on performance. Uh, this will give you the frame rate over resolution. You can play on fidelity. It does change the graphics a little bit. I don't think it's that much of a massive difference. I prefer to play in 60 FPS over having better graphics, but that is going to be up to you. Brightness, screen size, all that kind of stuff. Once again, it's going to be kind of personal preference. But for that graphics mode, definitely try out performance if you want to have a smoother experience. When it comes to audio, a lot of this will be personal preference as well. I don't run my master volume all the way up or the music volume. Some of that stuff does sound great. Don't get me wrong, the music in the game is really good. Kind of personal preference, but any of this right here, not really going to change anything in game like playability wise. It's not going to improve performance or anything like that. So all the audio options will be up to you, kind of personal preference once again. Now, when it comes to gameplay, we don't have a lot of options for what the button interactions can be. And that is one issue that a lot of people have with the Elder Scrolls Online is the weapon swap is going to be on that directional pad unless you go over to the template C, which will give your weapon swap to hold on triangle. Still not a great option in my opinion. Now, usually, I know a lot of people out there will use scuff controller or something like that. I have purchased the new DualSense Edge controller from PlayStation that does have the paddles on the back, so that way I can map my weapon swap to be one of the paddles. That is probably one of the best options you have if you don't like the button options you have in-game. If you're on Xbox, I know they have the Elite controllers, the Razer controllers. Any of those controllers where you can actually map the buttons to work with a back button or paddle really work well with this game. And of course, you can also play on keyboard and mouse if you want to kind of have that option. You can use hook up keyboard and mouse. I've never tried that in, uh, on the console version, but I do know some people use it to chat with. So you may can get that to work somehow. But personally, I think if you want to have a easier time swapping bars, those any kind of those uh, controllers you can use that have buttons on the back or paddles on the back work really well. Uh, vibration, I have this set on uh, in-game, but I have it turned off in my console settings. I don't like vibration on, but that's just a thing that you may or may not want. Of course, any of this information right here, once again, is going to be personal preference. This is going to hide all of your polymorph helmets, of course, your stamina upgrades and things on your mounts, uh, your speed upgrades. These will put different kind of cosmetic features on your mount or onto whatever mount you're using if you have these set to on or off. Um, when it comes to anything else within gameplay, this is kind of where I think these settings really affect how the game works and kind of helps you a lot along the way. So turn combat cues on and custom colors on. You will want to set your friendly color to whatever you prefer. I prefer this bright green. And you will turn the friendly brightness all the way down to the left. Then you'll kind of contest it. And you will see that's what friendly uh, you know, damage is going to look like. When you see this, you'll know it's friendly damage. Now, when it comes to the enemy damage, I prefer the bright pink because red is not really that good in dungeons, in my opinion, because a lot of dungeons, a lot of trials in game are really dark, uh, kind of ground, you know, just kind of that dark atmosphere, and the red does not pick up as well. So that's why I use the bright pink and turn it all the way to the right so it's up really bright. And then whenever the enemy has, you know, any kind of damage out on the ground, you will see that bright pink circle and kind of know to avoid that area. So that is the reason I use the bright pink turned all the way up. Preventing attack innocence, I have this set to own. That way you don't make the mistake of you know hurting an innocent. But if you are going to go out and use the blade of woe, anything like that, you will need to turn this off. Quick cast ground abilities. Turn this to automatic. That way you won't have to hit the button twice. If you have it set to own and you have an ability that you know takes a, a ground cast, you know it'll put the circle on the ground. You will have to place the circle and then once again tap the button again to cast the ability. If it is on automatic, it will automatically cast it to wherever you have that uh, you know area of effect and damage set. The champion ultimate auto cast is on. You can kind of do this to however you prefer. You know personal preference once again. Consolidate area loot is on. Auto loot is on. Auto loot stolen items is off. Prevent stealing placed items is on. That way you won't have to you know get caught by the guards. Auto add to craft bag. If you do have ESO plus, I recommend you turn this on. Loot history I have on. Of course, you know, these down here are all just by default. 
Now, when it comes to the camera, this is where you really can adjust some things in game to make it look better, in my opinion, depending on how you like to play. Uh, I do not play inverted, so that is off. Of course, the assassination camera is on. The magnitude of the shake in game. Now, this is one that I don't really see a massive amount of difference in. Sometimes you can tell, sometimes you can't. Preferably, I like to have it off, so you want it all the way to the left. But I've kind of been messing around with this lately just to see if there's any kind of noticeable difference to kind of, you know, effect of you playing that kind of adds something to the game. And I really don't tell a whole lot with it even set on. So that's going to be once, one thing that, once again, is going to kind of be personal preference. Camera sensitivity, this is going to be how fast your camera turns left and right. So if I go out here, it's going to be how fast you're looking this way. So I prefer to have it at least halfway, if not turned all the way up. That way you can turn quickly when walking, turn quickly when fighting in combat, whatever the case may be. So you can kind of leave that. I would at least recommend to the middle, if not turned all the way up. The first person field of view, you can have that all the way up. If you like to play in first person, I do not prefer to play in first person. The head bob should be turned all the way to the left, kind of off. Third person FOV, you want this set all the way to the right. The reason being is if you are on console and you hold down on the directional pad and push the right thumbstick in, you can see it goes into first person. If you hold it down on the D-pad and pull back on the right thumbstick, it will go all the way back far as you can go. And that's kind of the way I prefer to play the game. I like being able to see my surroundings. So having that option and the camera options to have that uh, first person and third person field of view stretched all the way out, no matter what field of view you like to play in. If you like to play in first person or third person, I prefer to have a really wide range of view. So if you're playing in third person, definitely put that all the way to the right, turn it up uh, high as it can go. And then that way, like I said, you can hold down on the directional pad and zoom in and out with the right thumbstick to go into first person or go all the way back in third person and have a wider range of view. Now, when it comes to the last couple settings here, the horizontal position, I put it all the way to the right, and the horizontal offset is kind of one over from the middle. When it comes to the interface, there's some good settings here that kind of help a little bit in-game, not quite as much as the nameplate settings, which we'll get to here in just a second. But these are all kind of set to default, except when I get down here to the quick chat. If you want this on, I would definitely recommend, you know, if you want to be able to read chat, turn that on and turn the fade rate all the way up. And of course, you know, if you want the bubbles over players' heads or not, that is something you can do. But everything else here is just what the game had on default, so it should all be set to on. Now, when it comes to the nameplates, this is where you can definitely kind of fix the game to look a little bit better. Turn nameplates on and turn the show title on. Of course, show guild tabard. If you want this to be on, um, this will show the guild name, you know, whatever guild they're in. If they have a tabard on, it will show it under their name in game. I always have the self show turned to off. The self highlight, of course, will be disabled if the self show is you know, turned to never. Now, when it comes to some of these things here, this will kind of determine what nameplates look like in the game in the open world. If you're running around, you're always going to see group members. You know, you're always going to see NPCs nameplates up. And you may not want to see everyone's all the time. Maybe only if you're targeting them or looking at them. So I always leave group members to always, uh, group member highlight to always, friendly NPCs to targeted, friendly NPC highlighted to targeted, and friendly players always. Uh, friendly players highlight targeted, neutral NPCs targeted, neutral NPCs highlighted is going to be targeted, enemy NPCs is going to be targeted, Enemy NPCs highlight is going to be targeted. Enemy player show is going to be targeted. And enemy player's highlight is going to be targeted. And what this kind of does here is you can see if I summon or even walk around with these and if I summon, you know, some of my different, uh, you know, different uh, allies we have in game. So if I summon one of them here, but you can even see it with these NPCs. If I'm not looking directly at them, that nameplate will not be over them. Now, the issue you have if you leave these on or have these on always, you will see these names over everyone. So whether they're an NPC, a real player, whatever the case may be, anywhere you go, you're going to see nameplates over everyone's head, which does make the screen look a little bit cluttered. So I prefer to have them on, like I said, to kind of when I look at them when it comes to an NPC. So whenever I target them, it will come on. And if there's a real person running around, which I'm sure we'll see plenty of people out here in Somerset that are real players, you will see their names will always kind of be 
above their heads when you see a real player. So when you're looking at them, you're always going to see those names. It will kind of fade away if you're not targeting them directly, as you can kind of see to my left here or right. But if you look at them, it will then, of course, light up. Now, when it comes to some of the other settings within uh, the nameplate options we have here, we do have some very important ones, I guess, for visual help with your own characters. Do you want to have your health bar zone that be centered? Uh, damage ta uh, taken indicator set to own. The frame border I have set to own. Of course, the self always going to be set to never. And then here you want group members always. Group members highlight always. The same kind of thing we just went over. Friendly NPCs and things like that. Targeted. Neutral NPCs, you want those set to targeted. Same with the enemies. You want them set to targeted or injured. When we go down to the alliance indicators, I have that set to enemy. Group members is own. Target, mark, uh, target markers is set to own. Uh, players you can resurrect is set to own, and followers is set to own. You can turn the glow thickness all the way up. That's what I do. But, of course, you can kind of change that personal preference, that with the intensity as well. That will just kind of give you that glow either to be a little bit brighter or a little bit, you know, less bright overall. Now, when it comes to the social part here, I use my size of my chat window messages to small because that way it won't take up so much room for one message. If you go medium or large, you're like you won't see much in the text chat you only see like one or two messages and you'll have to go back in the options to be able to read it so i like to have it set on small of course your hud chat display here will be on profanity filter that's going to be of course your personal preference leaderboard notifications it's going to be off auto decline duels is going to be on and auto decline tells of tribute games is going to be on if you have these set to off anytime anyone wants to duel or anytime anyone wants to play tales of tribute it's going to always pop up and ask you to accept yes or no and of course, for the leaderboard notifications, if you are in a guild, those guilds play a lot of, you know, solo dungeons or, or solo, you know, arenas or things like trials. You will get those notifications all the time. So I prefer not to have those on, just personal preference. Here you can change all of the colors for the different things in game uh, for say, yell, you know, tail, thing like that, group, zone, anything that revolves within the chat system itself. So I would recommend if you're in multiple guilds to go in and change these colors so that way you can have you know, each guild kind of with its own color so that you'll know who is talking when. If everything's the same color, it kind of gets confusing. You'll have to actually look down at the chat and see which guild it is. It will put beside them, you know, if it's in zone or if it's in the guild. But if it's the same color, it still gets kind of confusing. So I like to have those different colors. Personally, that way I can kind of keep up with who's talking where, if that makes sense, or who's talking when. When it comes to combat, turn the ability bar always to uh, kind of be always on, so you always want to see that. Ability bar timers are on. Ability bar back bar timers are on. Attribute bars are always show. Uh, for the resource numbers over the enemy's head, you want number and percent. Active combat tips, you can have that on or off personal preference. And ultimate number, you want set to on. That way, you will always see the information you're seeing on my screen right now. And then that way, if I cast an ability, as you can see, you can see the timer on the box itself. And if I swap bars, you can still see the bar over where that ability was. That way, you can keep up with your timers and knowing when to swap back and forth to recast all of your abilities. When it comes to combat text, you want that set to own, outgoing set to own, outgoing damage. You all want you want all of this on, healing over time, crowd control. All of those are going to be set to own. When it comes to pet damage, I make sure all of this is off because I really don't need to see the pet damage. And unless you're a warden, maybe sometimes with a necromancer or a sorcerer, you won't see a whole lot of pet information, but if you are one of those characters, you will see that pet damage info, and I don't think those need to be on. The only thing I want to know is my personal stuff that's going on, what damage I'm doing or receiving. The same comes for incoming. You want to make sure that incoming, anything for the pet is turned off, but anything for you is turned to on. And down here at the bottom, where it says buffs and debuffs, you want to always show those. Buffs on, self buffs on, self debuffs on, target debuffs on from others on, long effects on, and permanent effects off. The permanent effects for things like your Munda Stone, and of course if you have ESO Plus, it would always be kind of popped up right above your health bar. So if I eat some food, for example, you will see that is going to be left there. It's going to show I have two hours on that. Same if you use an XP scroll. It would show how, many, how long of a time you have left on that XP scroll. If you have the really long effects on, that, the last one I showed you here, um, or the permanent effects, excuse me, if you have those set on, it will always show your ESO Plus down there. It would show your Munda Stone down there. And I don't think you personally need that stuff. The information I want, of course, is like I said, for food and for XP scrolls. And last but not least, the accessibility options. Now, this is something new they have added over the years or have added to this. 
you can turn this on or off. Personally, for me, it's off. If you have uh, issues with maybe seeing or, or, or hearing things correctly or reading things, uh, you know, if anything is going on uh, personally that you could use some of this stuff for, that is what it's here for. And that is why they have added it over time. And these options are really good. Of course, you can have voice chat accessibility. You can have some things here, the narration uh, for zone chat, narration for any chat. And this will actually help anyone out that may have any kind of uh, need for that. So definitely check those out. And that's pretty much it, guys, for the best settings for console here in the Elder Scrolls Online. So leave me a comment. hope these helped you out. And, of course, if you liked the video, hit the like. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. And I'll catch you next time. Peace.